Hi everyone, Shan Heron at The Easiest Swing. Thanks for joining me on today's video, which I'm sure you're going to love because I'm going to show you how to produce more club head speed with less effort. And I know that sounds just too good to be true, so I'm going to prove it to you in this video as well. And I'm going to do that with the help of my swing right. Some of you will have a swing caddy, a hole in one, they pretty much do the same thing. With the swing right, I need to adjust my setting to a lower number in order to tighten the spring. And of course, when I tighten the spring, I need to produce more club head speed to release the spring and get the swing right to click. I'm also going to make a humming sound through my motion. And that humming sound will help you hear how much effort I'm putting in to produce the required result. So if the humming stops or it's being held or there's a, di a big difference in the sound, you will know that I'm putting in a lot more effort. So for example, a high setting doesn't require a lot of effort to release the spring and get the click. Mm. On a slightly lower setting, down to five, so this is mid setting, there will be a slight variation in the sound, so a little bit more effort to produce more club head speed. Mm. And now to take it right down to its lowest setting, right down to one. Now for those of you who have, have a swing right, you'll know how difficult this can be, if not impossible for many of you to produce the required swing speed. Oops. So yes, a little variation in the sound, but let's remember I'm producing a swing speed of about 90 miles an hour in order to release this spring. Now, I would like to compare that with the traditional swing template, just so you can get an idea of the difference in the effort. So, the traditional swing template, remember, is this wide swing arc down through the ball, keeping the head down and still staying behind with this, this late release. Notice the extension here just after impact. Look at the angle of my shoulder plane. And a lot of people, a lot of amateur golfers get stuck here because they're not producing the necessary swing speed to get into the finished position. In fact, a lot of them are slowing down trying to get all the way up here. You can hear the strain in my body. So let's see, let's see if I can get the click. Oh, I did. You can hear the amount of effort. So a little bit more difficult, a little bit more effort required, and just not as consistent a result. Again, with this wide swing arc and this late release. Now with the easiest swing. Okay, just gonna reduce the setting now because I'm going to now go into 
the explanation of how I do that. And I'm gonna just slow the swing down a bit for demonstrative purposes. So let's start with the finish position and work backwards. At the easiest swing, we often start with the finish position because we know that your computer is clever enough to work out the movements on its own, on autopilot, in order to achieve the desired destination. Rather like getting in a car, you have the destination programmed in your mind, and before you know it, you're already at your destination, and you don't even really know how you got there. You were listening to some songs on the radio, you are looking out the window, and your computer did it for you. You were on automatic pilot. Well, it's the same, we like to think of the golf swing in the same way. You, you program your computer on the practice swing. And then you just step into the ball with that single swing thought, the destination, the destination, the destination. And you let your computer do the rest. Let's look at the desired destination, the finished position. So you'll notice the low hands to start with. You'll notice the tone of my voice is very relaxed. I like to refer to the right side of my body in the finished position. Often I see a lot of golfers putting strain, finishing with a lot of strain on the right side. Too much effort going on here through the swing. So a nice relaxed right arm, right shoulder, right side at the finish. Another thing I'd like to point out to you is the parallel shoulder position to the floor. Also, from the side, I would just like you to, to pay attention to the weight shift that I have programmed my destination to. So, from the front on view, practice swing is here. It's not here. And I'll go on to explain that in a bit more detail in a minute. But let's use a couple of visual aids here first to help you see what's actually happening with the club face. Now in Brian's book, for those of you who have read it, he mentions the degree that the club face is closed 12 inches after impact. Do any of you remember? 30 degrees shut, 12, one foot, 12 inches after impact. A lot of people are very, very surprised by that statistic. Now, of course, when you're looking at the, the traditional template, that can become very confusing because we are told to keep the club face square for as long as possible. And then you get people doing all this kind of stuff. So, 30 degrees shut, 12 inches after impact. Look what happens in the easiest swing. Just look at that club face. This is representing the club face. Whatever the club face does, this does the same. So, let me give you a couple of reference points to help you relate to what's going on. So just think of for those of you that have played table tennis before or tennis, imagine playing with your left hand and you're creating some topspin across the table tennis table with your left hand. Or in tennis, a backhand with topspin across court. So that's similar to the movement. And a hitchhiker, left hand, 
Now, of course, this is for right-hand golfers, this reference that I'm giving you. There's the hitchhiker. You can see how the whole arm, especially from the elbow down, is engaged in some kind of turning, some kind of releasing. Now, I just want to go into a little bit of technical detail to explain very clearly the difference between our template and the traditional one. So the traditional template talks about using two levers with the help of two hinges. So the first lever is from the shoulder down to the club head and the hinge is in the shoulders, in the shoulder blade, shoulder socket, sorry. The second lever is thanks to the, the hinging of the left wrist. So now I've got another lever and putting them together, I've now got two levers. So this is the system that they are using in the traditional swing method, this two lever system, which we think for the average golfer doesn't create enough swing speed. If you're an elite athletic strong player, that's maybe possible. But for most of, of us average golfers, it's really very, very, very difficult. In fact, I would say up to 99% of average golfers really struggle to get any effective swing speed through the impact zone. So going back to the levers and the hinges, in the easiest swing, all we're proposing is a third hinge and a third, therefore, a third lever. And that hinge is in your elbow your left elbow if you're right-handed. So now you can see with the three hinges, one, two, three, I've now got three levers. And this three lever system will help you to create much more club head speed through the impact zone as you are releasing the club head naturally, without effort. Again, getting in to the desired position. Now, I'd like to just, for visual purposes, just refer back to another point here of the parallel shoulders. with the weight transfer. And this is important because this is where I get my power from. You look at pretty much any sport where there's a ball, or even in boxing, I often like to refer to boxing, where the boxer is not getting his power by throwing punches like this. If you take that movement apart, the boxer is using his weight transfer and the turn of his body and getting his body mass behind the punch in order to get the effective power that he needs. So just like that in the easiest swing, we are proposing that you move forward towards your target. We like to call it a forward swing and not a down swing. So effectively the whole body's involved all the way to the finish position. Now, you know, I don't really need, to, I'm just taking this apart for the sake of explanation. You just need to be concerned with your destination and just with a bit of practice, let your computer figure out what it needs to do to get into that destination. But there's three very good reference points for you. Relaxed right side, low finish, parallel shoulders. Sorry, four. <laughs> with the weight transfer on the leading foot. 
So I hope this video goes some way in explaining and helping you understand what we're proposing through the impact zone as opposed to the traditional method. In order for you to generate more club head speed with less effort. Remember the template of the easiest swing. You can see how similar the actual swing is to the blueprint, the la dance. Noticing the elbows position. So the more you practice your dance, and try to simulate as much of the swing as possible into the blueprint, the more effective will be your golf swing. I'd just like to emphasize that I'm not proposing that you all go out now and lower the settings on your training aids. This was just for the purpose of this video to help prove the amount of club head speed I was producing. Now I know a lot of you are in quarantine like me, so you won't be able to get out just now to hit some balls and explore this, but keep it in mind for that moment that you do get out to the driving range and make sure to write me some of your feedbacks. And I for one will not be surprised if I read that many of you are hitting your drives 20, 30, 40 yards further with this method. Thanks for watching, folks. All the best for now.